The way I like to judge the merits of a story is by separating my thoughts on it based on what I consider objective and subjective. Things I think are objective criticisms of a story would be plot holes, characters not behaving or progressing in a consistent way, or if a story doesn't follow the rules it sets up for itself, making it lose its own realism. You can make the rules as ridiculous as you want, but once you establish them, you have to obey them. I also think if a sequel makes what came before it worse by making storylines less relevant, undoing character arcs, or making the conflict of previous entries insignificant, that's a big problem for me. Things I think of as subjective would be if you just don't connect with something it's supposed to be emotional or moving. Maybe you just don't relate to it, or it's too over the top for you, or whatever. I think not liking the humor of something is a subjective take, even if most people agree with you. I mean, I think the other guys and the Cat in the Hat are two of the funniest movies I've ever watched and one is a 6.6 .6 on IMBD, and the other somehow has a 10% score on Rotten Tomatoes, which just goes to show you, you can't trust critics. Or maybe you just don't find the setting or concept of something interesting. You could even argue that thinking the dialogue is bad in a movie is a subjective opinion. Regardless of the reason you may not like something though, hating it does not make you a hater. Even if you don't like the last five things that came out of Star Wars, you can still be a Star Wars fan. And if you love the 20 Marvel shows that are less interesting than watching paint dry, you're still a real fan. It is not your job to make excuses for or to like things because they have a certain logo on them. Well, unless they're headcanon episodes, in which case, you know, like and subscribe. If someone is writing a story and using the Star Wars brand to get you to watch it, if you don't like it as much as what it's based on, that's their fault. If you're going to use the brand to get us to watch a movie, it's reasonable for us to expect you to maintain the quality of that brand. If the people making the movie or show don't understand what people liked about the franchise, they're the ones that aren't real fans. We don't have to try to like it. And the thing is, we'll try anyway the first couple times they put out something bad, because there's enough goodwill between the fans and the series that we want it to be good. And I know I'm really digging into Star Wars here, but it's just the best example. I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, what did you like about it in the first place? You'd be drawn to it for any number of things. For me, I've always loved it because of how deep and meaningful the relationships are. Luke and Vader, Obi-Wan and Anakin, Anakin and Ahsoka, Obi-Wan and Luke, Vader and Palpatine, etc. And I think that's why something like Rogue One, Andor, and The Mandalorian could be so different from the main movies and still feel like they fit in. But whatever makes most people like it, it must have been pretty impactful for Star Wars to last 46 years. There was something that they were doing that was so captivating that people would invest an insane amount of time to watch all this content. If the Star Wars being made now is not as good as what made it successful in the first place, it's not the audience's job to try to make excuses for it. Movies and TV shows are just products that we're buying from a company. When companies stop listening to what the fans want, we need to tell them that it sucks. I love Star Wars. I don't want to hear Star Wars and think negative things about it. I don't want to hear about a new movie and have to not get my hopes up because I've been disappointed by the last five things that came out. And I'm not trying to say Star Wars hasn't released anything good lately, I mean, they made Andor, they made, uh, Andor. Oh, Jedi Survivor, that was good, there you go. Two, two things. But my point is, if you're attached to a series, there's a reason you're attached to it. If they start getting rid of what made you like it, eventually you're gonna stop caring and you're gonna leave. And it's not even your job to know why you like it, it's the job of the people managing the property to understand the appeal of it. What Star Wars in particular has done is even worse than just making some bad movies. They made a bunch of bad projects, and then when the people they're making those projects for told them it was bad, they tried to act like all the fans didn't like their characters because they're terrible people, despite there being endless examples that show otherwise. Like, I mean, let's say you eat at a restaurant, and you keep coming back because you love the food. If you come in one day, and the food sucks, it's not that big a deal. You know, it's disappointing, but you move on. You go in a few days later, and it's terrible again. Most people would just stop going there. But if you really love it, you might go up to the manager and say, Hey, I don't know if you got a new cook or something, but the food isn't as good as it used to be. You don't want to stop eating there because you love the restaurant, and the reason you don't just walk out and go eat somewhere else next time is because they've built up some goodwill with you from all the times you loved the food. The more you're a fan of something, the worse it has to get in order for you to give up on it. People being vocal about new projects not being good enough should not be something that is just written off as you people just like to hate things. No, we want to love it again. And you need people like that, because when someone who isn't already a fan walks into that restaurant and eats the crappy food, they're not going to come back a second time. If they're not invested in it already, they're just going to go somewhere else. And I'm not saying you should just go around doing nothing but pointing out everything you don't like in the world. You should advocate for what you think is great too. If you disagree with everything I just said about Star Wars, and you really like the new stuff coming out, write a comment about why you like it. Make a video about it, you know? Make a TikTok, something. Get other people to watch it. 
If everyone is talking about they really hated something you loved, you should defend it. For instance, I think Season 7 of The Walking Dead is really good. Actually, I'll probably make a video about it pretty soon. From what I've seen though, not a lot of people agree with me on that. And that's fine, but I'll die on that hill. The Walking Dead definitely fell off hard in Season 8 and got worse from there, and it was because the showrunners didn't listen to what the fans were telling them. I actually think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a franchise that's been mishandled more than The Walking Dead in the last couple years. But when all this was happening in Season 8, you had a bunch of people that were defending it and saying, if you don't like it, just stop watching it. So everybody did. And look at the way people talk about that show now. No one talks about how great it was. No one talks about how amazing a character Rick Grimes and Daryl Dixon are. And it's such a shame. I mean, that was one of the biggest TV juggernauts for like 10 years. And people must have liked it if it was getting that kind of ratings. And now it's nothing. Or look what happened with Game of Thrones. The last season destroyed the whole thing. And the writing had started to get worse way before that. But nobody was calling it out because we all wanted to like it. The vast majority of that show was some of the best TV ever made, but now most things people say about it are negative. Or if they do talk about something good from it, it's always followed by, dang, but they really ruined it, you know, it's a shame they screwed up the ending so bad. And since they messed it up, I really haven't had the urge to rewatch Game of Thrones, and I used to love that show. So I really do think you need to get vocal when you don't like what's happening in these franchises. They need some course correction, they're not going to do it on their own. The fans have to say, this is kind of unacceptable. And you have to talk about both sides of it too, you know. You have to advocate for what you want. If you see a movie that's really original and you love it, talk about how great it was. Make these people take notes on it, you know. The quality of art goes down when people lower their standards, because at the end of the day, the goal is just to make money the easiest way possible. If they thought they could get you to watch a blank screen for two hours, that's exactly what they'd give you. I mean, the sad truth is the only way anyone has time to make art is if it makes money. Which reminds me that I am not even close to being monetized on YouTube, so please help a brother out. I mean, we have 12 subscribers over here, and you're laughing. You're laughing. But on a real note, that's why people complain about art being bad. As long as it's an argument made in good faith, that's a positive thing. If a company is running a franchise into the ground, the only way to make them stop is if enough people tell them that we're going to stop paying for it if you don't improve. For fans to tell everyone, if you don't like it, don't watch it, if enough people do that, a lot of things you like are probably going to go away. If they're fans and they are complaining about it, it's because they want to see more of it and they think it can be better than what you're getting. People are complaining about it because they want that franchise to succeed. They don't want to just move on because there's something they really love about it that's drawing them back into it. It's just really bizarre to me to see a point where people are getting shamed for saying they like stuff, people are getting shamed for saying they hate stuff. At the end of the day, if you're not allowed to judge art, then what's the point of it? Isn't the purpose of art to provide a valuable experience to the viewer? To get some kind of emotional or intellectual reaction? Or sometimes even just be meaningless entertainment? It's supposed to spark a discussion. If we're not supposed to critically judge art or form opinions about it that are sometimes negative and sometimes positive, then we might as well be watching a blank screen. I like art that makes you feel something or think about things in different ways. I think stories are at their best when they give you 85% of the puzzle and make you figure out the last 15. Now, I don't want to watch something that I've seen done better a hundred times in other things. And I think Marvel's one of the worst offenders of this kind of thing right now. I mean, just the amount of projects that were in Phase 4 were more than all three phases that started the MCU. Because I would still go to the theater to see new Spider-Man. I would still go to see Joker. I would still go to see Batman. But it's like all these projects are coming out of an assembly line and they have no personality, they have no stakes, nothing changes when it starts from when it ends. It's too much to ask you to watch and it's not worth watching even on its own. And even the worst movie that's out there, the worst show or worst project, still has something it does well, you know, something to offer. But that shouldn't mean that we can't air our grievances about it also and say, you know what, this really isn't good enough. For what I'm paying, not just in money, but in time, to sit down and watch this insane amount of content, it goes nowhere. You know, Marvel has established what it's capable of when it made Infinity War and Endgame and even some of the earlier movies. I mean, the MCU was never all great. You know, a lot of it was pretty forgettable. But you've established that you're capable of making something pretty fantastic. You know, something that clearly took a lot of effort and planning and time and care that you put into it. So the fact that you're not doing that now tells me that it's time to check out. But anyway, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I should have one about House of the Dragon coming out relatively soon, so be on the lookout for that. And if you're interested in seeing more videos that are less specific, you know, like this one, a little less structured, drop a like and let me know. And with that, hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you all in the next episode of Headcanon.